Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very realistic electric piano or Rhodes sound inside Serum, but you can follow along in virtually any synth. They all work just about the same. This is an incredibly versatile sound, so I'm going to start with some sound demos to show you what it's like, and then we can break the patch down in a lot of detail. There are many ways to play this patch, but I'll just start with some chords. So it's really, really smooth. You can uh, really change this sound with effects, add a lot of chorus and reverb, and it becomes really spacious. It's also very responsive to how you play. So if you play soft, it'll be nice and quiet, but if you play with a lot more energy and emotion, it will become a little bit louder. The patch is made of three parts. So the first part is the actual harmonic and tonal part, which sounds like this. The second part of the sound emulates the keys being pressed and a hammer being struck, which brings a lot of realism to the sound. And the third part of the sound are all the effects that we use, such as reverbs, filters, and choruses, which you can use inside your synth or on your mixer, and this really brings a lot more texture to the sound. But now I'm going to initialize the patch, and we can look at this from scratch. First step in our synth is to go to our oscillator, which is creating the sound, and I'm going to select a sine wave. So analog, basic shapes, or in this case, analog BD sine. This one's like a regular sine wave, but it's got a little bit of, uh, a little bit more harmonics to it. So that's our initial tone. Next, we're going to go to the ADSR envelope for the amplitude of this sound. So this is going to shape the volume of this sound. First thing we're going to do is add about 10 milliseconds of attack, which rounds off the start, makes it a little bit softer. I'm going to add about two seconds of decay, and I'm going to take the sustain down to minus 10 dB. Then I'm going to make this curve a little, have a little bit more tension on the envelope here. And finally, I'm just going to add a little bit of release, maybe somewhere between 50 and 100. This gives us a slightly uh, soft but plucky envelope. So we get a little bit of a, a pluck at the start, and then it holds a constant tone. However, depending on the piano sound you want, you might actually want the sustain to come all the way down. It's entirely up to you how much sustain you want to have on the sound. That's the beauty of sound design. You can make it perfect for your song. The next thing we're going to do is go and add the filter in. So over here, I just turn it on. I'm only using one oscillator, and I'm going to keep it on a low pass 12 dB per octave filter here. So we're cutting away a little bit of the high end. Now what I'm going to do is take another envelope and give it sort of a similar shape to the first envelope, uh, and I'm going to link this envelope to the cutoff. I'm just going to hover over it until these two arrows appear, then click and drag down. Adding this filter means that it doesn't get too shrill when you start playing high up. The next thing to do is go back to our oscillator and add some voices of unison. You don't have to have any voices of unison, but I like adding just a bit of subtle width to the sound. So I'm going to have about five voices of unison, and the trick here is to pull the detune amount all the way down. If it's too high, it starts sounding really electronic and spacey, whereas I'd rather it was just a nice and subtle width. So it still sounds quite sort of old fashioned, a bit sort of retro. Next, I'm going to go to our LFO. I'm going to drag this top point all the way over, and I'm going to create a point by double left clicking in the middle, just pulling it down like this. And I'm going to link this LFO to the fine tuning of oscillator A. I'm going to move my mouse over until I've got the double arrow, and I'm going to press Shift and Alt on my keyboard and a left click. This changes the modulation so it goes from a higher pitch back to the original pitch, as opposed to going all over the place. Going back to LFO1, I want to turn this into an envelope by clicking just here. This means that it only triggers once. Now I'm going to go back up to this oscillator A fine tune. I'm going to left click and drag, and I'm going to pull this detune uh, amount in until it's maybe at about 20 or 30. Maybe a little bit less, maybe about 15. The reason I've linked this LFO or envelope to the fine pitch it's because I want each note to start just a little bit above the pitch and then quickly drift down to the correct pitch for the note. That might sound a little bit silly, but it sort of gives this feeling of drift and movement to the note. It's not enough detuning that your chords and melodies sound off and off key, but it's just enough that you get this very vintage and warm feeling 
to the track. Now we're going to move across to LFO 2. We're going to leave it the way it is, and I'm just going to link this LFO to the level of oscillator A. I'm going to move my mouse until I see this up and down arrow, left click and drag, until the blue is just a tiny little amount here. Now when I press a key you'll hear what this does, but it adds a tremolo effect, so the volume of each key just rises up and down quickly. If I just increase the rate to 1 8th, it sounds pretty nice. It just gives us this subtle tremolo effect. The final thing I need to do with this oscillator is make it velocity sensitive, so that when I play softly the volume is quiet, and when I play uh, with energy it's loud. So here I just link the velocity again to the level, this time I'm going to pull all the way down, increase that blue all the way up, and now what I like to do is actually drag this point in the middle, or create a new point, and make the curve look a little bit like this. I find that making the curve shallow here and steep actually gives me the velocity profile I like, and for my playing it responds a lot better than a completely linear curve. But mess with the velocity curve and see what works best for you. The next step is to make that hammer noise, so I'm going to turn off oscillator A, and I'm going to turn on the noise oscillator, which right now is just an AC hum. So I'm going to take uh, a different attack sound. Now there's lots you can use. One that I think sounds very good is the Guitar Mute 2, but I haven't listened to all of them, so one of them might actually be even better. Experiment for yourself. Once you've selected your noise, turn the level all the way up, just to start off with, and press this here until it's blue, and uh, that means that it's only going to play once. So what I'm going to do is pitch down this sound, and you can hear that we get this nice sort of hammer sound which I just think sounds amazing. So in this case the pitch was 38%, but experiment for yourself, you might get something a lot better. And now if I combine that with oscillator A, we get this little um, thump at the start of the sound. So you can definitely adjust the level of this and make it sit perfectly in the mix, but now it's time to move on to the effects, which is where things really start becoming exciting. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of EQ. This sound is already building up too much low end, so I'm just going to add in a high pass filter, I've brought the Q down a little bit, and then I'm bringing the frequency down to maybe about 100, 150 hertz, and it just makes it a little bit more bearable. But you might want your sound to have more low end, that's entirely up to you. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in some chorus, which sounds great, leave everything as it is, pull up the low pass filter to the top, and then adjust the mix until it sounds perfect. So you might want that, or you might want an awful lot less. Perfect. I'm just going to pull that down just a little bit more. Finally, I'm going to add some reverb. I love reverb. Again, not too much. Take the mix down, a little bit of low cut to cut some of the low end out. Add a little bit more mix. And finally, I'm going to add a filter, or it could be an EQ. Uh, a low pass filter, a gentle one, if you are playing notes very high up, they can sometimes sound a little bit shrill, so if you have, a, if you lower the cutoff just a little bit, you still get the high notes. They're just a little bit smoother. But the sound design doesn't have to stop here, you can of course just pile on as many effects as you want in your synth, or on your mixer, do whatever it takes to make it sound great for your song. So that is pretty much this entire sound. Now in my sound bank, which you can buy if you want, it's in the description, this is one of the presets, it's called Lo-Fi Rhodes Piano, and in that particular preset I've also set up the macros so they can control the reverb chorus and the amount of hammer noise on the go, so you don't have to dive in and change all these things in the matrix and the effects. So if you want the preset, and all the presets from my sound bank, uh, there's quite a lot of them in here, uh, feel free to get that pack. But that's it for this video, so thank you very much for watching, hope it was helpful, and uh, do let me know what you want to see next. Bye for now.